Hi, welcome back to OMG The Cloud. Today in our container series, we're going to have a little bit of crossover into our IoT series as well. We're going to deploy an MQTT broker. Now, if you're not familiar with what that is, it's essentially a really lightweight communication protocol that is purpose-built for IoT devices and low power devices. It has low latency, low network overhead, and it's perfect for things like this where you just need to have a lightweight communication channel. So let's dive right into it. On our screen here, we're gonna deploy this as a container as we often have, and we have our basic configuration. We're gonna be using a package called Mosquito. This is an open source MQTT broker and provided by the Eclipse Foundation. And we're gonna use three volumes. So it's gonna be Mosquito Data, Mosquito Log, and Mosquito Config. So those are our three places where we need to have persistent data. And we're gonna use this Eclipse Mosquito as a base image. And to start, we're just gonna expose port 1883. This is the standard MQTT port. There's a few other ports that we'll get into in more advanced configurations down the road around secure connections and web sockets. But for starting out here, we're just gonna use the base 1883. So we're gonna deploy this out and this is also an opportunity where we're going to get into Docker volumes just a little bit too. Uh, this is something that sooner or later you're going to have to get under the hood into the actual file system where your Docker volumes live. So we're going to touch on that a little bit here in order to get a configuration file into place. So what we're doing here, we're deploying this out on my Docker stack. We are deploying it on any node that is not a manager. We have a restart policy and a delay. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that file and let's deploy it. So docker stack deploy, specify the compose file and the name of it. I'm gonna call it MQTT. Off and running, so it creates a network and it creates the service. Now I am on my manager node and I just told it to deploy on any node that is not a manager. So we're gonna to need to pop over to one of the other nodes. So let's take a quick look as a refresher what my nodes are. Docker node LS. And we'll see I have just two nodes in our swarm. We have the one we're sitting on right now, which is the active manager and a worker node, which is the OMG test O2. So that's where we suspect that our MQTT container deployed. And we need to get over there to get into the volumes. And let's see what's running over here on OMG test O2, Docker PS. Okay, there we are. That's what we'd hope to find. So we have our MQTT container deployed over there and also have my portainer agent. So that was from a previous deploy. Now, uh, I mentioned volumes. So we have three volumes in here and we need to get a configuration file into one of those defined volumes. So where do those volumes live? Hmm, let's take a look. Docker volume LS. This is gonna show us all of the local volumes here on this node. So those are the three volumes that we defined in our configuration file. And I specifically need to get into that config one. Well, I don't know where that's actually stored. So let's take a look. So if I use Docker volume inspect, and then the name of that volume, I'll get all of the configuration details around that. And what I'm really looking for here is this mount point. So that's where these files live on the local file system. And we're gonna need to get into there. Now keep in mind these are secured, so you have to sudo into there, or you can do a sudo su. So I'm gonna do that just for ease of use. So sudo su, and now I'm in as sudo, so now I can browse to that path without a lot of red tape. So if I just change directories over to that volume. So when that container deployed, it wrote out a configuration file. That's kind of what we expect. So there's a couple ways to to reach this. So we're reaching into this volume from outside of the container. You can also reach into that container directly by using docker exec dash it to connect interactively into that running container and then you're in its file system. So that's one way to do it as well. I've shown that in the past. I just wanna show this method as well so you know how to do it both ways. Okay, let's edit that file. This is a base configuration file for Mosquito. Now this is all the configuration parameters out of the box, but if you scroll through here, everything is commented out. So obviously we're not giving our broker anything to work with. We need to actually configure this. So I'm going to drop in just a really basic config. As you can see, there's really not a lot to it. So we have our listener and we give it the port 1883. We tell it what protocol that is. It is MQTT. We are going to 
keep persistence off for now. Log destination, log timestamp, and allow anonymous. Okay, so this is gonna let us connect. We're going to now make the assumption here that your MQTT broker is not public facing, that it's on a trusted network because we are allowing anonymous connections to it. This is just a communication broker, a message broker, okay? We're not passing any top secret data here, okay? We're, we're sending temperature sensor data and stuff like that. So uh, this is okay inside your network where it's trusted. In a later episode, we're gonna do a more advanced configuration where we're gonna turn on TLS authentication. So that'll encrypt in flight. And then we're also going to enable authentication. So that'll really lock down your MQTT broker and make it highly secure. But for starters, let's just get this up and running and get you familiar with it. Go ahead and save that file and exit out. And so let's just pop back over to our manager node and let's just redeploy that stack. That's the cleanest way to do it. So Docker stack remove QTT. Okay. And then let's get back into where that configuration file is. Docker stack deploy the compose file and the name and QTT. Deploy that out. Off it goes. And on my other terminal window here from my local machine, I'm going to go ahead and just connect to that with the mosquito sub uh, dash H is the host. Uh, I'm natting this through my test PFSense firewall. So I have that IP and dash T is the topic. And I'm using the pound sign wrapped in a single quote. So that's the entire body of the broker. And dash V is verbose. Well, there's nothing there, right? Well, we haven't published anything to it. So publish and subscribe, pub sub. That's how an MQTT broker works. We're now listening. We've subscribed to the root topic. Let's see what happens if we publish something to that. So on our other window, get back to my local machine here and let's try publishing something over to the broker and see what happens. Okay, so we're going to publish to that broker the same host and the T is for topic. So I'm gonna put this in test slash topic and dash M is the message. And we'll do a typical hello world. And look at that. So when I send that message over on the side where we're subscribed to that, we see that message come through. We see test slash topic so that's nested. So test is the top, topic is one level down, and hello world. Okay, keep in mind our topics are free form. You can organize those however you want. You can nest those down. So if you wanted to do another example, let's say test topic two, and we see that appear over there too. If I disconnect over on the side that I'm subscribed to that, and then I resubscribe, hmm, there's nothing there. The reason for that is that message did not have the retain flag. That's the other thing about the MQTT brokers is the messages are generally stateless. So you have to be listening to that topic. You have to be subscribed to that broker at the time the message is sent or you don't see anything. Sometimes that's what you want and sometimes that's not. So an example of where you might want to use a retain flag would be a temperature sensor that only reports data every 10 or 15 minutes. It wakes up, it sends a message to a particular topic and then it goes back to sleep. Well, if there are things listening to that broker at certain intervals, they might want to pop in and just see what the last message was. They don't want to sit and wait 10 minutes for that sensor to wake up and send it data. Conversely, there's times when you would not want a message to be retained. For example, if you had a button that sent a on command to a light switch, that light switch is going to be listening for that message. Well, what if that light switch went offline and then didn't come back online for a couple hours. It had some sort of a problem. Do you really want that light switch to randomly turn on uh, two or three hours later? Yeah, maybe in the middle of the night. Probably not. If it didn't receive that message for some reason, you pretty much just want to discard it. So there's scenarios for both and we do use them for different things. To that end, let me show you a retain flag. That is done just by adding in this dash R to the end of the command. We sent that over, we see on the subscribing side where we're listening that we have hello world retained. Okay, so let's see if that is retained. If I close out of that broker and then I resubscribe, ah, now I do see it because that message has been retained and it'll be retained until you either clear it, you null it out or you change it to something else. So if I close out and I come back and I modify that message and I say 42, that's the answer. And now I go back in and I see that now there's a 42. That's the only retained message on the broker. Well, if we wanted to clear out that retained flag so that every time I go in here, it doesn't keep telling me 42, I just wanna clear it. We just wanna pass that topic, the dash N for null and dash R. If we resubscribe, now that message is gone. 
A real concrete example of when we're going to use a retain flag in the very near future is when we go back to that ESP32 temperature sensor. Now it's battery powered, so it spends the majority of its life in deep sleep mode. Well, it only wakes up for a second or two to connect and send its data and go back to sleep. That'd be pretty tricky to catch that thing and do any sort of a reboot remotely without having to physically intervene. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a particular topic with a message that is retained. So when that sensor wakes up, not only is it sending that data, it's looking to see if that one data bit is set. And if it is, that tells it, don't go back to sleep, stay awake. So that we can reflash or send a over the air update to it. And then turn that retain flag back off it reboots, it goes back to sleep, back into its normal cycle. So that's a real world example of how we'll use retain flags. We're gonna build upon this quite a bit in our coming series. This again, crosses over heavily into our IoT series. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have questions, definitely let me know down in the comments. Please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you see the next one coming in. And I'll see you in a couple days on our next one. Thanks for watching.